nature of this study was to try and figure out for our clinicians the frequency of increases in cardiac troponin values that would occur when we moved from a relatively insensitive fourth generation assay to high sensitivity cardiac troponin. In order to do that, we did a very extensive uh, analytic validation to be sure that we were aware of all of the robust characteristics analytically, and then did looked at 1,550 consecutive samples that came into the lab and asked the question, what are the changes that occurred? <clears throat> the changes were substantial. I'm Dr. Alan Jaffe. I'm a professor of cardiology and a professor of laboratory medicine and pathology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. The uh, article we've discussed today is entitled the Elevated High Sensitivity Cardiac Troponin T Pilot Diagnoses and Outcomes, which, which can be read in its entirety in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings September edition. Because the fourth generation assay, even using the appropriate cutoff of the 99th percentile of less than 0.01 nanograms per ml, was elevated in only about 32% of patients. The vast majority of these samples came from the emergency room, but they were enriched to some extent with some patients from the coronary care unit. When one used the fifth generation assay, the frequency of increases was 64%. That is to say nearly double the frequency of increases. So in order to help our clinician colleagues figure out what one ought to do with this, we looked carefully at all of these clinical scenarios in an attempt to answer what do these elevations represent. One thing that is very clear and was clear right from the beginning, although the exact numbers are hard to come by because of the fact that we got a fair number of samples from intensive care units, is the fact that the MI rate appeared to go up, but not substantially compared to the prior MI plus unstable angina rate. That is to say that if what really happened was that some of the patients who we had diagnosed previously with unstable angina became much more easily recognized as having non-STEMI or non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. The frequency of non-STEMI with the high sensitivity assay was 7.1%. It was near, probably a little less than half of that with the prior assay. But again, if one added the unstable angina, there was a, only a very modest change. The vast number of increases that we saw were therefore not in patients with possible ischemic heart disease. They were in two bins and we tabulate them for clinicians who are interested. One, a bin that includes cardiovascular diagnoses. That is to say patients who had heart failure, arrhythmias, and things that would normally go to a cardiovascular service that are indicative of the severe cardiac stress, be it hemodynamic or electrical, that goes on in these patients. And the second large bin were in those who were critically ill with pneumonia, with sepsis, with GI bleeding and the like. The important takeaways are several fold. First and most important is that the vast majority of increases using high sensitivity cardiac troponin T and migrating from the fourth generation assay. And parenthetically, I might add that some previous studies utilizing cardiac troponin I have not seen such a, a marked increase in part because some of the cardiac troponin I assays are, were substantially more sensitive than our previously used fourth generation troponin T assay. 
nonetheless, these increases were indicative of patients who were an increased risk for mortality going forward. And that's not surprising. It fits with a very robust literature that suggests that when you're critically ill and your heart's involved, your prognosis is substantially worse than if you're critically ill and your heart is not involved. We tabulated these in large part because in looking to go forward the Mayo Clinic with this new assay, if indeed we had anticipated that all of these patients needed to be monitored, for example, either hemodynamically or electrically, we would have had a major problem with the amount of facility we had. Fortunately, in previous studies, we have shown that electrical monitoring, obviously in the absence of clear clinical indications, but solely based on troponin, is not necessary in the absence of known or, or highly suspected acute ischemic heart disease. In addition, it's important to know that although those patients may not need care for an acute cardiac event like an MI, they are at substantial risk because what they're telling you is that there's concomitant cardiac injury. Often that means that the heart was abnormal to start with, but it also means that in response to whatever the disease is, that there is difficulty with cardiac function and therefore one is seeing evidence of myocardial injury. The appropriate term for most of these increases is not myocardial infarction, not supply demand imbalance, but myocardial injury. This is important for clinicians to understand because if indeed we went ahead and thought of all of these as having ischemic heart disease, one would have gone down pathways that were not appropriate for their care. In the future, we need to codify these in a more systematic way, and we're in the process of doing that now so that there will be still more information for clinicians to use in dealing with the increased number of increases that one will see in cardiac troponin when one goes to high sensitivity assays. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.